Russia attacks the aircraft, passengers and sovereign territory of NATO countries jams GPS signals. Aircraft flying over the Baltic region are experiencing cases of GPS signal jamming. Russia is considered the culprit of these issues, reports Politico. The blackout episodes, known as GPS jamming, have been occurring regularly since the start of the war in Ukraine in 2022. The source writes, Politico specifies that the interferences are concentrated in the Kaliningrad region of the Russian Federation. Russia is regularly attacking the aircraft, passengers and sovereign territory of NATO countries, said Dana Goward, president of the Resilient Navigation and Timing Foundation. She called these incidents real threats and reminded how, during the accidental jamming in 2019, a passenger plane narrowly missed crashing into a mountain. The European Union Aviation Safety Agency is studying this issue, but regulators currently state that GPS issues do not pose a danger to flights. Cases of interference reported by pilots have steadily increased since January 2022. This was stated by the European Aviation Safety Organization, which receives reports from pilots through its voluntary incident reporting system, EVAIR. During the first two months of 2024, EVAIR recorded high increases in GPS outages reports. In absolute figures, we received 985 GPS outages compared with 1,371 for the whole of 2023, Eurocontrol reported. They added that the number of incidents in the first two months of this year was almost seven times higher than in the first two months of 2023. Politico reports that last year, Israel began jamming and spoofing GPS signals at the border with Lebanon to protect its territory from Hezbollah missile attacks. Recently, Israeli disruptions have caused problems for civilian aviation in Lebanon. It was reported that planes bound for Beirut were forced to turn back due to signal shutdown. While disruptions may be inconvenient, they do not pose a significant risk to safety. An aircraft can safely navigate the globe without GPS, said Stuart Fox, Director of Flight Safety and Technical Operations at the International Air Transport Association. This time, Russia recruited mercenaries from Sri Lanka and Hungary for war against Ukraine. The Russian Federation has recruited citizens from Sri Lanka for the war against Ukraine. Some of them have already been killed, reports Al Jazeera. The news agency spoke with two mercenaries who fought on the side of the Russian Federation. They recounted how they came under attack by a Ukrainian drone in the temporarily occupied Donetsk region. We didn't know that it would be this dangerous, said Senaka Bandara. Russia promised citizens of Sri Lanka that they would be involved in bunker duty. However, the Ukrainian military managed to hit the bunker where the mercenaries were stationed. The material writes that hundreds of citizens of Sri Lanka are fighting on the side of Russia against Ukraine. Most of them joined the war for a salary of $3,000 and the prospect of obtaining Russian citizenship. It has also been established that some of the mercenaries have already been killed. According to Daily News Hungary, an allegedly Hungarian pro-Russian group has been recruiting Hungarian mercenaries through Russian social media with promises of high salaries, citizenship and social support in exchange for fighting against Ukraine. The so-called Legion of St. Stephen began recruiting mercenaries for the Russian military in September 2023 as reported by Blick. While their invitation is open to all nationalities, Hungarians enjoy priority in admission. The group offers a high salary, though not specifying details on the exact amount and citizenship for Hungarians upon joining the Russian military ranks. Recently, the National Resistance Center reported that locals in the temporarily occupied territory observed the arrival of more Kremlin mercenaries. In particular, invaders are bringing in fighters from Cuba and Nepal. Reuters also reported that India has asked Russia for the early release of some of its citizens working in the Russian army in support jobs. A representative of the coordinated headquarters for the treatment of prisoners of war, Petro Yatsenko, said that the Russian mobilization resource is running out, so the aggressor country is increasingly recruiting foreigners for the war against Ukraine. Ukrainian captivity includes representatives from Cuba, Nepal, African countries and Latin America. Polish general, Russians may have fired missile into Polish airspace to test NATO response. 
Poland will demand explanations from Moscow after a Russian missile violated the Polish airspace during the mass attack against Ukraine on the morning of March the 24th, the Polish Foreign Ministry said. Poland, a NATO member, scrambled fighter jets to protect its airspace as Russian forces launched another large-scale aerial attack on Ukraine. The Russian cruise missile entered Poland's airspace for 39 seconds, Jacek Siwira, chief of Poland's National Security Bureau, said on X. He also said the NATO allies had been briefed about yet another violation of the NATO border by a Russian cruise missile. The Polish Foreign Ministry spokesperson, Paweł Ronski, called on Russia to stop its terrorist air attacks on the people and territory of Ukraine to end the war and address the country's internal problems. According to a Polish general, Stanislaw Kozyej, Russia may have deliberately fired a missile into NATO member Poland's airspace in a weekend test of the country and alliance's defenses, he said. Such situations may be deliberately provoked by the enemy in order to test the Polish air defense system, Stanislaw Kozyej said in an interview with Polish press agency. You never know what a rocket like that can do, Kozyej said. All the more so because they are often dual-purpose missiles that can carry a nuclear charge, the former head of Poland's National Security Bureau added. Moreover, the Russians may want to use the border airspace while also violating the Polish border to attack Ukrainian objects with cruise missiles from the west where air defense is probably weaker, he said in an interview. The situation now requires very decisive actions. In my opinion, the only remedy to protect Polish airspace and Polish territory against this type of event is the establishment by NATO of an anti-missile defense zone extended in front of the Polish border over the territory of Ukraine, he added.